Hello, happy Monday to everyone. I hope everyone had a wonderful weekend. I hope you had a wonderful day. And good evening, good day, good morning, wherever you are. I hope you are doing well. If you don't know, I am Jaybird, the word, and I like to play games and spread joy. So on Mondays, I like to stream games, teaching you solo modes, and possibly having a game where you can play along with me as I play. I also enjoy hanging out, talking to you in chat, talking about favorite games, games you've been playing, games I've been playing, what we've been doing during the weeks, weekends, and such. Fridays, I like to unbox games with you in chat, so you can pick the games I unbox of what I have from a small selection of still t new to me games. I'll let y'all pick what I'll the box. You can ask questions about it. That's Friday at 6 p.m. But this is Monday, so tonight we'll be playing a game. I'll be playing a role player in a little bit. But first, let's talk about our weekend, our week, and what we have going on. Now, this past weekend, I got to have a little bit of fun and do a quick road trip over to West Virginia and visit my very good friend, Chris, the charity board gamer. Now, if you follow him online, you will see he had an unfortunate little accident where he slipped and fell hit the back of his head on a brick pillar. Got about a two to three inch gash in the back of his head requiring staples Friday night. But that didn't deter us. We still got up on Saturday and set out some games and had some fun streaming online for all of y'all to hang out with us. So we played about five games on Saturday. We started with Tiny Epic Pirates. Then we moved on to, oh, what was the second game? Gods Love Dinosaurs. Then we did Four Gardens. Then we, his boys joined us and we played a 2v2 game of Unmatched. Where Chris playing as Bruce Lee suffered about the same fate as Chris of getting hurt early and not lasting very long in the game. And then I played as Jekyll and Hyde. My teammate, Elijah, was Buffy the Vampire Slayer. And then we beat up on Little Red played by Daniel, Chris's other son. So we had a lot of fun, and then we moved on to Kingdom Rush to end the night, Rift in Time, the first scenario. We had had a long day of gaming. We didn't focus on all the rules and made some mistakes and lost the scenario. But that happens as you learn games, try new games, and get used to playing them. But we still had a lot of fun doing it. So... Let me know what you've been playing recently, what you played over the weekend, what you have coming up, and or if any of the games I just talked about are games you've tried or want to know more about, let me know. I'd be happy to tell you more about them and my experience with them. Tiny Epic Pirates is one we, we actually opened right before we played it, learned it on stream and played. We did realize that at a lower player count game, you're more likely to utilize the market economy versus sinking other ships as a pirate. So I'd be interested to try it again at a higher player count. Then Gods Love Dinosaurs. My first experience with it, it's a nice tile selection game. And then as you place the tiles, you can generate new species on your map. And then at certain points during the game, species are activated to either the prey will multiply because they're breeding. The predators will go out and eat. And if they're able to eat, they multiply. And then the dinosaurs can move around. You get points if they eat the predators. And so that was really fun. I kind of found a way to beat Chris. He was in the lead for a while. And I pulled off just the right move to beat him by one point. Really fun to do. He was not the happiest with losing that way. But... It happens. We still had a ton of fun. Moved on to Four Gardens, which has a standing pagoda tower. Four different levels. They all spin. As you're playing the game, you can play cards that will tell you to spin at a certain level. Anything above that level spins with it 90 degrees. And so then, depending on the face you're looking at, you can gather resources a certain way. So you need to be mindful of which ones you're spinning, which resources are showing on that side, and how many you'll be getting because you're trying to fulfill the cards and complete sequences of cards and create a bonus sequence where if you're doing matching sequences you get to reactivate scoring 
So it, it's really unique how it works that way. And then Unmatched, uh, we've played a few times, both 1v1 and on teams. Chris keeps wanting to rematch because he doesn't like losing. Who doesn't? But it's still okay. So every time we kind of choose different characters to try out. This time he had Twitter select the characters we were all be playing. And it seemed Twitter set him up to lose. Because the last time I did a few mind tricks, psyched him out, beat him when he could have beat me, so he wanted to rematch. This game was not quite as balanced and as close as the previous game. And then, of course, Kingdom Rush is you're trying to protect the kingdom from an onslaught of hordes of different attacking creatures, and you have your towers of archers and knights to deal with them. The first scenario is pretty tight. There's only so many spaces, so it's pretty easy to get overrun. And, of course, the portals being a, a mechanic we had not prepared for kind of ruined us, and we let our main heroes die too fast. But hopefully I can play... Kingdom Rush here on stream for y'all at some point. I believe there are solo rules, so I'll look into that. Maybe I can show y'all that as well. But today will be about role player. Now, if you don't know, role player is from Thunderworks Games, and it's Chris and James in chat. Yes, Chris, you did win on saving the stakes, and hello, James, as well. I hope y'all are both doing well today. Chris, even though you saved the stakes. I'm a little concerned that that was the first thing out of your mouth of how I grabbed the stakes instead of verifying how well you were doing. Still recovering. I hope you've been getting some rest and not exerting yourself too much because Saturday was a long game or a long day of gaming for us. And like you said, you probably exerted yourself a little too much that day. But yes, we had a great weekend together. And hopefully you're starting to relax. I'm ready for D&D &D tomorrow. Uh, we get to level up and have a little bit more fun. You'll have a little bit more health this time. Maybe more health in-game than out of game. We'll see. Um, but we should have fun regardless. Yes. So if you don't know, I'll be playing Role Player tonight. I actually got to teach Chris this game when I first visited him and his family last Thursday. What was it Thanksgiving week and got to teach him and now apparently his boys really love the game and they've started creating characters that they want to import into D&D. Yes, Chris, you did beat me in role player by I believe it was one point. But it's okay cuz when it's a teaching game, I don't care how well I do. Well, then again, I don't really care how well I do typically. I, I more enjoy the company. But I'll let you have that win. You 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 seem to need them, considering how how much I've beat you on stream. At some point, I'll get you onto onto my stream, and we'll start our own counter here as well, and maybe you can get ahead of me this way. <laughs> yeah, smack talk. Well, I guess I can show the game. Let's switch to this one. Yeah, so I'll be playing role player today. Uh, it's a solo setup, but I do have a character and some bonus cards from some of the expansions and promos. So I'll be playing as the Penguin, which comes from the Friends and Familiar uh, expansion. Yeah, Roleplayer is one of my favorite games, which I, I need to be playing more often. So I was like, you know what? I'll play it on stream. Might as well. And how can I not be a bird? When, the, when it's an option. Of course, Chris, get back to relaxing. We wanted to say hello. Uh, I hope you have a wonderful evening as well. I appreciate you stopping by. Go get the rest. Go take care of your head. We want those staples removed as early as possible. And it's up to you if you want it to scar or not. But yes, go relax. So I'll be playing as the Penguin Race which comes from the Friends and Familiar expansion. I'll be playing with the Cartographer card, which actually comes as a promo card in the Cartographer's game. Yes, also by Thunderworks Games. I'll be using the Enigma for the alignment and Paladin for my uh, cl class. Make sure I get 
that right. Now I do have the metal coins. They're so nice. Let me put a few a little close up so y'all can really see them, how nice they are. These I actually picked up. These are from Thunderworks Games. I picked them up at one of the conventions in 2019 before everything shut down. But they have some nice weight to them. Of course, you could hear the the clink of them. So that's going to be lovely to play with. Uh, let's see. The Paladin does have the white class. But just so it shows up easier, I'll be using blue cubes. Tracking my stuff. So I'll be looking for... But I will be looking for the white dice as my class for the scoring for the end game. So I will move these to the main board as they typically would be during gameplay. So you get a class card, backstory, and an alignment whenever you play this game. Now playing as the, the solo version, it sets up about the same as a two player game. There is one card from the market that we remove, I believe it is the Diplomacy card. And then there are some special rules about taking one gold die out of the bag as the enemy die that depending on which initiative card we end up selecting, we roll this and what number is rolled, it removes some cards from the market. So it's been a while since I played solo, so I might mess up a rule or two on it. But I'll try to follow all the rules. I do have the rule book right here in front of me, right off of screen. So I'll try to follow all the rules. But ultimately, it's about just enjoying the process of creating a unique D&D style character. Because that is what this game does. You're creating strength, dex, con constitution, intellect, wisdom, and charisma scores using dice with the drafting mechanic. So the class card that you get actually tells you what scores you're aiming to achieve by the end of the game and you get so many stars if you achieve those numbers and then with your backstory card it says where you want to attempt to get specific colored die in your grid for additional stars which are points and then your alignment card you always start in the middle at basically true neutral and then as you play the game, if you buy and use certain cards, or there's also a way to do it on your board with your attributes, you can move that cube around. And then depending on what star value, be it negative or positive, you end the game on, are additional points you can receive. Now, as with uh, regular games, I believe you get five dice to start the game solo. It has a start with six die from the bag, randomly drawn and rolled. So that's what I'm going to do now. So hopefully that isn't too loud when I shake the bag. But who doesn't enjoy a little ASMR dice? Now I also do have the role player little dice tower I'll be trying to use today. Have a little fun with it. So, I got... There's... Three. Let's get three more. So these are my starting dice. These dice can go anywhere on my board. Any dice you place always have to go in the far this left hand of a row. Now during the game, when you play a die into a row, you do have a special ability. Right now, we do not get to use any of those abilities. If you fill up a row, you automatically get one coin. If you place a gold die, you get two coins. And so it is the pip value shown on the die that actually counts towards the total value for your class at the end of the game. Now, let's look at what the Paladin has. So, the Strength wants it to be 17 by the end of the game. But be being a Penguin, I will automatically get a negative 1 to whatever dice are total for the dice. So if I want to get that 17 for 3 stars, I basically need all 3 dice to be 6s. Dex needs to be a 15 or 16 for two stars at the end. Constitution gets three stars if I can get 17. Now before I move on too far, Dexterity also gets a negative one for being in a pink one. Down to Intellect, it just needs to be a 14 or more for one star. Wisdom, which I get plus two to. 
As long as I have a 16 or 17, I get two stars. Charisma, I need a 14 or more for one star. So the wisdom is going to be pretty easy to get because basically as long as I get 14 in that on the dice faces, plus two to that, it's already going to bump it up for me. So let's see where I want to start. I got some sixes and five, four, three, two. So I got some highs, some lows. I typically aim to focus on the three and two star spaces first as they, of course, are worth more points for the end of the game. So if I can go and get some high dice into those, it is very useful. As long as I don't block too many of my good abilities. Because strength lets you flip a die over when you place a die into that during the game. Dexterity lets you switch to die on your board. Constitution lets you raise or lower die by one point. Intellect lets you reroll. Wisdom lets you move your alignment cube by one. And Charisma basically gives you a one coin discount for one round. So let's see what I want to do. Um, well, I do want a green in the first spot of Consti Constitution. So I'm going to put that green six there. That's going to help me out a lot. So I'm going three stars if I get 17 or more, plus the green there. Definitely a good combo already. Let's see. I could go ahead and go... I typically like switching dice, so I don't want to fill my decks too much. Strength. Uh, being that I can flip a die. I'm not sure how often I do that. I think the one I use the least is typically Charisma during the game. So I don't mind filling that as, as early. Can I get 14 plus in that? I can. And I can potentially switch. So I'm just going to go like this. Oh, but I need a black die there. I might switch it for a die later. I'm not as worried about that one. Wisdom. It's going to go here. Since I don't move it as much, I'll go and do... I'll go and put the woods on, because I can potentially switch it out of there later. So, because I completely filled a row, I get one coin automatically. And we already started with five coins. Because I placed a gold die, I'm going to get two coins. Okay, so we drew the six starting dice from the bag. Roll them, arrange them under a character sheet. So now we can begin the standard steps for a regular game. Typically, you're going to have these initiative cards, which is going typically for a two plus player game. It is the number of players plus one, and then they're all numbered. The ones between the beginning and end typically add a coin. Solo, you set up the same as a two player game, and then we use the AI enemy die. Okay, so what we're going to do is remove the one gold die. Uh, we're going to create, so we created the market stack. There are two different uh, symbols on the market cards. There's a single and a double dot. Single ones have been shuffled, put on top. Double dots are at the bottom half of the deck shuffled. So for solo rules, it says uh, create the market, flip the top card of the market to create a separate trash pile. So this is now guaranteed a card I will not be able to buy at all. And now we can create the actual market for the round. These are all cards that we can buy depending if we have enough m coins to purchase them. Some are skills which you can have an unlimited amount of. Some are armor which you can collect sets of for to get really extra bonus points. You can get weapons. Weapons typically have a hand symbol and you cannot typically cannot carry more than two hands worth of weapons. There are at least a class or two that allow additional we are not playing as that. Now being a paladin, if our alignment marker is on the three space at the start of a round, we can gain a gold. So being for the first round of the game, my alignment is already on the three. That's going to be a bonus thing. Until I move that, I'm going to be gaining additional gold. 
So that's a, a fun way we can exploit that for a little bit. Now, skill cards are the main things that change your alignment, but they allow you to do additional things. So for example, the Intimidate that just showed up, if I were to purchase it and end up using it, it would shift me to the right on my alignment, but before after selecting an initiative card, being one of the th dice on these, I can re-roll any number of the dice in the dice pool and reorder them, which can be very helpful because if I fill up my re-roll slot of intelligence down here, that gives me another option for rolling. The leather boots, there's going to be four in the set. Now, so the more you can collect, the more valuable they become. And the mace itself, when any player discards a card from the market, gain gold. That would be an additional way to gain gold. Because during a round, you have the choice to either purchase a card or discard one for coins. So if I know I plan to discard a lot of coins, I can generate a lot of coins that way for myself. In a, in a solo game, every eight coins I have at the end are worth a point. So I could either go for the, the gold hoard or I could go for a different plan. Being that I'm a cartographer, I'm exploring, and I'm a paladin, I may not care much about it as gold if I was actually playing this as a character. Because they have set it up with the role player adventures, I believe, the, their most recent Kickstarter. Is that characters you create can basically b then be used in a D&D game in a certain way that they've set up. So, each round we're going to take dice from the bag, three dice, we're going to roll them. And then we're going to order them. So one, two, three. So let's roll them. Now remember, I am playing with the blue cubes, but because of Paladin, I want white dice for additional points at the end of the game. So these three already helped me out. In this case, we rolled a five, a four, and a one. Now, to an extent, it doesn't matter as much in a solo game, except for the coin in the middle. These dice are always ordered from low to high. So the lower the die is, the earlier in the initiative it typically would be. And these initiatives come into play in the multiplier game specifically in that the lower die you're picking means you're picking a earlier initiative, which allows you to buy from the market before everyone else. So there is a give and take to that as well. Now in this instance, I know gold die are going to give me additional coins. And knowing I can place it somewhere that gives me an action to flip it over, to, to switch some die around, or some other effect, I don't see why I wouldn't take that at this instant. So I think what I'm going to do, yeah, I'm going to take that five. So when I select it in a solo game, depending on where you select it from, there are rules to do with the enemy die. So if I select from the three initiative card, I roll the enemy die. So let's do that. So we rolled a six. When you roll a six on the enemy die, in this instance, if five or six move the rightmost card in the market to the trash pile. So this card right here goes to the trash immediately before I'm able to purchase anything. So this is the way it cycles the market out to, to the point that it acts like another player is taking cards out of the market before you have a chance to see them. Or you see them, but you can't buy them. So then I will place the die. Now, what I'm going to do, I'm going to place it here. Yep. So placing it, I automatically get two coins for it being a gold die. Now, when, place, when you place something in the intelligence row, you can re-roll any die on your board. So in this instance, I can take something that is, say, low that's going to be hard for me to use and get the, the numbers I want. Reroll it. Hopefully I get something better. Now probably my two lowest right now are the two and the three. 
right now this three guarantees this number here for the star so what I'm gonna do I'm gonna roll this one now because I'm ro rolling it and moving it out of the board when I place it back it does not reactivate that row that I place it in but it does have to go back in the same spot so I'm gonna take this two and roll it and it's a two again so no effect could have been worse it's not a one but kind of wasted that action to an extent so there's a little give and take on pressing your luck with some of these actions okay so now it comes to the market phase where I have a chance to buy one of the market cards in this instance I could either go strong on hopefully I see all the leather boots try to buy them all but I do like the option of a lot of rolling that could happen so I'm gonna do it's only gonna cost me one because there's one in the upper corner so I'm gonna spend the one take that intimidate card I'm, this is a scoring card I'm gonna move this off to the side we'll get back to it at the end of the game but I'm gonna have my intimidate skill card up here which can be used immediately if it had the right effect now you can only use I believe you can use as many as you want per round, but only one will refresh each round. Now this is a before or after selective initiative die, we roll any number. So it won't apply this round, I can't really use it. But if I use that skill, I will have to move my alignment to the right. Okay, so and then after I buy a card, uh, move the leftmost card in the market to the discard pile, which is this one. Easy enough. If there were any more left, we'd then also trash those as well. And then the cleanup. So cleanup phase is always taking these dice that were not selected, putting them back in the bag. Yeah, two big roll, exactly. Exactly what I wanted. Um, now if I'd taken the die where this coin is, I would also get the coin and then we'd add another coin to it for the next round but since I did not take the coin the coin remains there can never be more than one coin on the card so we move on to the next round we're gonna take three die we'll roll them and get three new cards for the market and right now I'm already regretting not buying those leather boots because I see leather gloves already appearing Now these I would order low to high, so the highest always goes up here. If there's a tie between two die, the player placing them in the order gets to decide which goes where. So maybe they want a certain color. Uh, in this instance, I will be doing this. And then what I will do with it, I think I need to go ahead and activate my skill I'm going to turn it just to know that I used it, move my alignment to the right, and I want to re-roll all three of these. <laughs> and that was worse. I did not do that well. <laughs> that hurt me anymore. <laughs> yeah, and again, two's all the way. If, if this is going to be my night, I'm going to struggle. <laughs> um... So now I can place them in any order. I might as well aim for whatever color I want the most. And at this point, I'm going to put blue in the middle. Because I will be selecting that one. Which gives me the coin at minimum. I'm going to place here in the wisdom row, allowing me to shift my alignment back to center. Now what I did miss because of our Paladin, we started the round on the three, so we should have gained a coin then. But we're also pushing it back to three for the next round. Put these in stacks of three. And change them in for some of these. All these silvers are count as three. Um, okay. So with the solar rules, when you pick from the two slot, we're going to roll the enemy die. 
it rolls a one. On a one in this instance, move the less leftmost card in the market to the trash. So this card, the honest card, which would have been nice. Uh, goes out and I cannot purchase it. So I think in this instance, I know there's at least one pair of leather armor collection already in the discard that I cannot get. So the highest I can would get for three possible leather things would be five points. So I think instead, I'm going to go for the heavy crossbow. It is a two-handed item that would cost me four to buy. But by buying this, when I buy from the market, I'll be paying one fewer gold every time. This will be helpful, and then since a, every eight gold I have will be worth a point, so I can go for points in that regard, at least. Okay, so we're going to go to clean up. That goes over here, put the dice back, and we we'll go to the next round. It's going to get the market ready, and then I'll get the dice out. Okay. And then I get to refresh one skill card. Okay. And in the market now, we have a climb card, which before, after selecting initiative card, flip all the dice and the dice pull to the opposite sides and reorder. Cunning gain starts for each skill card I have. And then chain helm is a different set of, of armor based on chain. And the first one we've seen of that. If, if one by red or white classes, which we are white, you gain additional star for the set. Okay, so let's see, we got five, four, two. We did begin the round on our three space for alignment, so we do get a coin in that instance. Okay, what can I use and make use of now? Oh, I should have put a coin back onto this middle row with a little reminder on the card. What's my best use? Yes, I really need some higher numbers hopefully soon. Since we're going for the, the heavy gold, I'm going to take the black one so I can get, take the gold with it. And I will place it into my constitution row. do is when you place in constitution you can take a die and add plus or minus one to the die face I think what I will do is increase One of my, f yeah, I'm going to increase this five to a six. And that will help me out, because I may switch that around to a different position. Roll the enemy die. It rolls a six, because, you know, from the two space for the six does nothing. Okay, so we have all three options to choose from for buying. Do I want, uh, do I flip all the dice in the dice pool? I could go cunning, game stars for each skill I buy. 
I could go heavy into this into the Yeah, I'll go cunning. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna use my intimidate skill. Which lets me re-roll those. They get reordered. Doesn't really matter. Shifts this way. I'm gonna buy the cunning card. Which actually should have only cost me two instead of three. I get one back. Now this does have a symbol on it, so immediately shift my alignment left. Keeping me in the center so I can get points at the beginning of the next round. End of the round, we do get rid of cards from the market. Reset. Refresh one skill. Just one skill. New market cards. should have been here. I do get a coin because I'm at three space currently. Let's do a quick trade in. Three for three. Keep it tidy. Okay. Let's see what I might do this round. Okay, the pickpocket. Two coins would cost me, but allows me to decrease the face value of one die on my character sheet by one to gain two gold. An ancient spear, which requires a hand, so I couldn't keep it in my heavy crossbow. Dedicated would be gain two stars if I have at least one weapon, one skill, two traits, and one armor. That would put me one armor away from getting two, two guaranteed stars. I like that. It's going to cost me four. But only three because my crossbow. It's an automatic move left when I purchase it. But what I can do, activate my intimidate skill to reroll some dice in the pool before I select. Hopefully I get some better options. I'm going to reroll these two. Okay. Now I'm supposed to reorder when I do this. So that does this. And I do like that I rolled a six, so I'm gonna take that six. Place it in my constitution row, allowing me to add plus or minus one to a die, which I'll do that to my other five down here. I roll I took from the three spot we roll the enemy die result is a three meaning move the middle card to the trash which is good because I want to dedicate cost me three when I did my intimidate I should have shifted right did it bind that card shifts me back left so we can keep our cycle of coins for each round okay so we go to clean up clean up these clean up the dice ready for the next round refresh one now we will need to buy at least one type of armor card okay so I see a mystic cloak this is part of the mystic set a quarter staff takes two hands I should have also gained one coin for completing my constitution row the courageous when scoring attribute goals plus two or negative or negative two value to any single score. Ooh, that's not bad. Okay, I got three dice. Four, four, one. Okay. I also get a coin for being on my three star because of being a paladin right now. 
Let's see what I can do with these. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to take the red four, place it here, take the coin, intelligence row, I get to reroll any one die. So again, I'm going to reroll the white two, and of course it's a one, so it did get worse that time. That's my luck this game. Still enjoying it though. Okay, since I roll took from the two spot, the enemy die is going to be a three. So in this case, the three moved the rightmost card from the market to the trash. That leaves me the Mystic Cloak set or the quarter staff. Now I do like that they have your crossbows saving me money every time. But if I did the quarter staff, completing an attribute row would gain two additional gold. I still have three rows left. That's worth six gold. Crossbow could save me essentially seven gold because there's about seven rounds left. Seven spots, seven rounds. So really I find that this saves me more gold than this would net me. So I'm deciding to keep my crossbow because I could decide to trash this if I wanted to buy that. But I could instead buy the Mystic Cloak, which is a type of armor. And by buying a piece of an armor, it actually goes towards my dedicated goal to guarantee at least two stars there. And then one piece of this is one star. This first piece of that we've seen, if I get all three, it's worth six stars. So there's a balance there. It's at least a one star card plus three. So that's a three star move. Three points at the end of the game for three points because it'd be four minus my one. So yeah, I'm just going to buy it guarantees I trigger that at the end of the game. So we trash this, these go to the bag, and reset for the next round. More market cards. So this time we see Reckless. You should gain two stars for each of my attribute scores that is five or less. Weak, gain two stars if either my strength or con is eight or less, or cure wounds. Increase the face value of one die on your class color. Uh, of your class color on your character sheet by one. That would, when used, increase my alignment up to a more favorable good instead of evil. Right now I'm sitting at true neutral. Okay. Uh, I shook the dice, didn't draw dice. Let's do that real quick. One, two, three in my hand. Three in the shoot. Oh, nice. Low to high. I get a coin for being on my three. Coin to the card. Now here's the tricky situation. I can either take a gold die for two coins. Or white, which is my class, after class color, guaranteeing me a point at the end of the game. So both tricky options, especially since these are high numbers, five and six on the gold ones, that are really nice to use. Because mm. option here is if I take this one, we don't roll the enemy die at all. So I'm guaranteed all options for buying. Take one of these, we roll. If I take this third one, there's guaranteed to be one card taken away from the market. See how much I care about these these cards to buy. Reckless, I don't care about as much. Though I did have fun when Chris beat me by one point. I knew the dice I were getting were so bad. I actually went reckless and was close to winning because I switched it up, had a lot of one-star th things I couldn't get. 
Yeah, exactly. The great part about this game is you can't score them all, so it's about just scoring the most possible and doing as well as you can with what you have. So it's really, I found, if you focus on three to four attributes, and if you can focus on the three stars and at least one star, or one of the two stars, and then focus on getting points in other ways is where I have the best way of getting enough points. Um, James, what would you buy? What, or what die would you take in this situation? This, this is where the paths diverge. Do I go strong into my color, or do I go strong into the gold play? So if I took a high number, let's see, I have 10, I would need at least a 4 there. I could try to reroll, or if I start building into my strength, I could, ooh, I see what I can do. If I take the 6, if I take the 6, put in my nice strength, allows me to flip my 1 die over, makes my wisdom a total of 14. I have a chance to increase that a little bit more later. And that gets me the six I know I talked about wanting in strength. And flip my one over to a higher number. I think is the play I'm th Gold is not many points at the end. Yeah, gold is not many points. It takes eight gold for one point. But I think the moves I can do with that gold dice is going to net me more. Because if I took the white two, I would likely place it. Or if I place it in the dexterity roll with the white two, place in dexterity, switch for one of my sixes and my charisma. Yeah, you're right. Solo eight to one conversion. Because I know I was planning on switching. Didn't care about my charisma roll. Switching these sixes out. So I could do that. Oh. Come on, I'm going to be 17, so I'm what, 12 at 16? I'm one away from that, so I'll have to switch the a four and a five. Ooh. These are all kind of. That makes sense. Sorry, which way? Uh, taking the two and switching it into, into the charisma? Or placing the six in strength and rotating my one upside down? Because that gives me an additional six to move around later. If I can't get my wisdom up. Because part of it Placing decks here. I need 15 or 16 there. Mm. I think. That must be white. Because I don't want to switch that one later. Okay, here's what I'm going to do. Six and strength. Okay, so you're, you're saying six and strength, so we're going to do it. Six here. Flip my one. Gives me the highest number possible there. Because I took from the third, after roll the enemy die, a two removes the leftmost. So I, it's okay, I didn't care about the reckless. And because of my cunning action of stars per skill card, I think I need to go for cure wounds because the weak, I'm not going low strength or con. So that one's not worth anything to me. So this is going to cost me two because of my crossbow. Adds me another skill. So it's at least a point at the end of the game. So now we'll reset.
Yeah, I'm like eight followers away before I can hit. Um, I just blinked on the Twitch um, affiliate, Twitch affiliate, because I need 50 followers. I'm eight away, and then I can start having channel points to set up polls and rewards for y'all for watching. So if you have ideas for what kind of rewards I should set up or things they all redeem the points for, let me know. I know a lot of people do like the hydrates. Amanda Panda has done like the Panda onesie, so I thought I do have a parrot onesie I could put as an option. Or I could do polls for what games to play next. Ooh, one, 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 five. likely to use a black to switch to this. I should have also gained a coin at the beginning of the round because of being a paladin. Oh, so let's look at the market cards that came out. Longsword, it's another weapon. When scoring attribute goals, plus one value to all dice in my class color. Ooh. Right now, that would trigger this row. If I switch that six up, that would trigger. Currently, this one is scores charisma, but if I pick it up, that would be nice. But I'd start stop getting my discount with the crossbow. Chain leggings. I'm not caring about armor anymore, unless I find the mystic set. Loyal gain four stars if you have completed all your attribute goals. That's not going to happen. So I know I don't care about these two very much. So it's more about the long sword. Do I do a switch now? Constitution needs to be 17. I'm at 16. Do I take the 5 and put it into Dex? Because that's what I need the most of. Because I got my green, red, blue. I need to get black here. Put one white there. Let's see, because it's going to be hard to get, because I've filled up my wisdom row, so unless I get other skills that trigger my alignment back, these are just going to push my alignment away from where I want them to be for the points at the end game. So I'll probably wait to see more skills before I trigger those again. Unless I really want to reroll these. No, because I can just take the black one, put it into the strength, let it flip to a six, and take the coin for it. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Take it, place it, flip it. Because I rolled into that one. Six takes the rightmost card, which I didn't care about. Leaving the. Yeah, I think I want to take that long sword. So I'm going to go forego the crossbow, trash it. And you have to trash it before you buy the next card, I believe. I'm going to make sure. Any Tommy player may discard a weapon card from their player to the market discard pile. Discarding allows a player to buy a new weapon. Yeah, so I have to discard before I buy, so I can't get the discount on the long sword now. So this will cost me three. 
But now I do have an additional hand open if I want to buy another weapon. And when scoring attribute goals, all, all my white dice will be plus one. Which will be very helpful as I move them around. Okay, reset the round. Okay, so we got sleight of hand skill, which allows uh, to move one die on your character sheet to any empty space and slide the die to the left to fill in the open spaces. Acrobatics, plus one face value to any one die, and negative one value to a different die. Or obnoxious, which is gain two stars for each attribute roll with three of the same colored dice. Well, that's going to be basically none. So let's roll the dice, see what we get, and then we'll go from there. Three, four, I got a coin because I was on my three spot. Coin goes to here. Not sure I care about any of those cards very much. Unless I just buy a skill for the, the point at the end of the game. Let me just go for a cheap skill. Okay, so now I'm sitting at... I don't want to flip that one unless I go for a switch. I need purple in the upper corner. What was that? Nine. Purchasing power. Do I want to reroll? Yeah, I could reroll the two in the wisdom row. I'd set my intelligence at 14. Guarantee scoring that row. Yeah, so I'm going to take this. Put this here, allows me to reroll something and take this two, reroll it. And it's a two again, of course. That's my luck this game. And since I took from the middle, reroll the die, it's a three. On a three, remove the rightmost card to the trash. And both skills cost me three. Is there one that is move one die in your character sheet to an empty space and slide it over? Think of anything, yeah. The sleight of hand, if I end up using it, is going to be more useful than acrobatic. Even though I may not end up using it at all. Okay, we'll clean up. Uh, coin goes here. We get three more cards. I'm still on my three right here so I get a coin again. So now we're starting to see the two dot market cards so that means we're more than halfway through the deck. So I see a jeweled dagger. When scoring attribute goals plus one value to all gold die, which I have a couple of that might help me out as well on top of my long sword. The tower shield counts as an additional armor card for one incomplete set. When scoring the sets or clumsy Gain two stars if either your dex or charisma is eight or less, which currently I have nothing in my dex, but I want that to be 15 or 16. Ooh, now I got some low, low numbers. Okay, so I'm liking the thought of the dagger. Plus one to all my gold die. Yeah, only a few more rounds. Yeah, this round and three more after it. I'm thinking of tanking this gold die. 
getting the money for it. What can I? What's my best placement for it? Real quick, I'm gonna, or what's my best switch move? Because I'm getting a plus one to my white die for sure. Puts that so it's 16. That's currently at 13, 15. So that's still not enough for my wisdom roll. Charisma is more than enough. So I can switch that, switch that. Okay, I'm gonna go for the risky play. I'm gonna go for the two into dexterity. Six, fourteen, and thirteen. Yeah, don't care about my intelligence, so I can switch two dice. And I will switch this two with the six that's down there already. Thanks, that's what I wanted it to do. Just don't overdo the attributes with skills or weapon cards. Yeah. I'm trying to hit in exact numbers a little difficult so I don't overdo or underdo because the intelligence row just needs to be 14 plus so I don't really care about it because it's only a one star row so it's my throwaway row currently my wisdom which should be 16 to 17 sits at well the whites more like a 7 10 12 plus one is 13, plus two is 15, so it won't score. But if I pick up the jeweled dagger, it will. But that makes my charisma off the charts already. Put me seven in this row, 13 up there, minus one, back to 12. So that gives me a little bit more leeway up there. Yeah, I think I want to buy the dagger for. Th well, before I can do that, I need to roll. This guy, it's a five. When you take from the second, a five, four, five, or six, do nothing. So nothing. So I will buy the dagger. So now I can count. It's two hands worth of things. All white, all gold die in my rows. Or plus one. Hello, Jess. Happy Monday indeed. I hope you had a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend. Thank you for your, your drive-by hi. I'm looking forward to playing cartographers on Wednesday together. And that was partially what made me decide to play role player tonight. Decided might as well have a Thunderworks Games week out of it. So James is helping me out a little bit when I get a little AP and can't decide what moves I want to make. He's telling me, hey, do this or don't do that. And hopefully I can hit affiliate this week or something. I'm eight followers away from hitting affiliate. So maybe collab collabing with you and seeing who's all in your stream and they can See who I am they might give me a follow because I want to be able to get, give everyone channel points and have fun with that four one two okay so the mystic robes came out which is nice because I have the cloak already I do get a coin at the beginning of the round because my attributes on the three being a paladin and put a coin over here now, where did I want to uh, look into doing this? I got flips and I got 
switches left. Well, that's wonderful that Soma is also doing wonderful, enjoying the sunshine. Yeah, we'll we'll make it the the happy hour hangout and push to affiliate. And then maybe if I do hit it before Friday, we can, I'll, I'll do something special Friday on my stream. We can kind of hype that up or something. And y'all can give me ideas what would be the best way to celebrate it. Okay, what did I say? Okay, we got the Mystic Robes. Uh, honorable is just straight up three stars, which I wouldn't be able to afford. Negotiate is another skill I could get. I keep seeing all these skills that push right. Before, after selecting initiative card, exchange one dining character sheet with one on initiative cards. In order. That's more useful in multiplayer. One chip challenge. Whew. You know what? I'm going to write that down. I will look it up. I like spicy, so. Um, if I can find it and could order it in time... Maybe. Or we'll push it and be like, hey, we get it this week. I will do the one chip challenge as soon as it comes in. As long as it's not like 30 bucks for the one chip when, like, when Chris was looking at it. That was ridiculous how expensive it was. But, yeah, I, I was saying then if it wasn't that expensive, I would have joined Chris to do it. But spicy doesn't necessarily scare me. Like, I'm, I know how to prep for it, and growing up in Texas, I've always enjoyed good spicy food. As long as it had flavor, of course. Like, if it's only heat just to burn you, not always as enjoyable, but for good causes, for the fun of it, every once in a while, it's fun to do a little spice challenge. I, th I think when I used to work at Chick-fil-A way back in high school, like, the cooks in the back being that they were Mexican, they would always make, like, pickled jalapenos and stuff. And, like, I'd, I'd come in, they'd, like, offer it to me, like, and then, like, I'd eat it and walk back up front and be helping customers. They'd be, like, peeking around the corner and be like, is he sweating? Is it too hot for him? And I'd just be like, it was nothing. And they'd be like, why is he not reacting? So, that's how I am with spice. I enjoy it when it's good flavor. Like, some things, I get the tear eye and clear the sinuses, though. Well, Jess and James, we'll have to find the right situation that we can convince both of y'all to do the chip challenge. We'll, we'll find the right reason. Like, maybe a really big goal or fun or charity thing that y'all can be part of. And then we'll all do it. And we'll make Chris do it again, of course. And I'm getting distracted, not even looking at the game. Because I'm thinking about the fun that doing a one-chip challenge would be. Okay, so now that I have jewel, dagger, and longsword, all my whites and gold are plus one. So let's verify my numbers. Currently we're at 13. It's going to get subtracted one, so it's sitting at 12. So I need a five in that spot. And then down here, charisma, we said it needs to be 14 plus. I'm more than okay with. This is 10, 12, 14, 16. So that's actually going to score now. That's good. Intelligence needed to be 14 plus. Won't score at 11. Con, I need right at 17. I'm sitting at 16 right now. Okay, so I do need to change that if possible. If I do a switch with the, f I said wisdom. No, if I switch it to there, it won't score anymore. But con is worth three, wisdom is worth two. Yes, if I do a switch, my black four, gold four, gold up there, makes this seventeen. This then makes this an eleven, thirteen, fifteen. 
not as critical. It's a lower scoring attribute. Yeah, five should be opposite two. Yeah. So if I go black two here to flip. still need some high numbers in my dexterity too. I take the black, switch it down there. So I don't care about charisma. I do not have a five on board yet. I don't think I want to use one of my skills. Because I want to keep it on the plus three, because that's two extra that's at least two extra points I'm holding on to. Unless I find another skill to pull it back. Because I got a skill that goes up and two that go right. So I need one that goes left or down before I trigger them again. This is where I get into, especially playing a solo game, it's where I get into AP and like, I, I try to really want to maximize everything. And, th and that's kind of the the crunchy part of this, of role players, one of the fun parts that I really enjoy is how thanky it gets near the end of how many things can I maximize. Purple up here would be nice. If I use both my switches to get different sixes up there. Con, I said we're sitting at 10, 16, I want to be 17. Yes, a hard switch of that right there. Okay, yeah, I'm going to do this. Take the, but then I can't afford any. Six, nine, eleven, and that could be a four. Okay, so I'm going to risk it. Place the two here, take the coin. Placing the two there lets me switch two. I'm going to switch my three with that two. Gets me black into the bottom corner, white to that space. Roll in, take him from the middle. Roll, it's a five. We do nothing. I have four coins. And I can afford the Mystic Robe. And we 
do a reset. Those get discarded. These are the last two moves are going to be my hardest decisions. Okay, well, I'm still on my three, so I get one coin back. One, two, three. Six. Six and a four. I won't be able to afford any of this, so I'm just going to discard one for two coins. If I take the blue four, I'm just going to put it in the dex row, which will make it a total of ten. No. Eleven. Fifteen. Minus one. Not enough. So I need at least a five in my dex row now, because it's certain at nine, eleven. 10. So 5 or 6 would be okay. Don't flip any of those. This is currently at 10, 12, 14, enough. 10, 11, it could only go to 12, Khan is sitting at 12, 16, oh man, how do I change that? Come on, oh, the 6 to that row. I think this is what I decided I was going to do. Take this coin, place there. Allows me to have to flip. And I can flip. That's already enough. That's enough. Do I want to flip anything? Six needs to go there. That's seven plus four, eleven. Not ten because the negative one needs a five or six. I eh, might as well roll it. Doesn't matter. Just flip that one. Taken from the middle. Roll this. Rolls a three. Rolling three. Move the right most card. I'm going to discard one for the two coin. Discard that. Reset for the last round. Okay, there's a skill. Okay. Ooh. See what we got going on here. It costs three knowledge. Increase or decrease the face value of the die on your character sheet by one or two. Oh. That may just be the skill I need because I can do that immediately when I buy it too. So this comes down to what did I find? I'm still at three. I get that. Five and five. Don't want the gold. That's too much though. Oh, I should have gotten a coin for finishing a row a while ago. Nimble's one star. Sheet to any empty space. Oh, God. Do I affect that? Yeah, I'll do this. Have those there. All 
my friend going to say hi to some other stream buddies. Enjoy the rest of my life. Thank you just for stopping by. I appreciate it. I do hope you have a wonderful evening. Say hi to everyone else for me. And I look forward to talking to you later and streaming together on Wednesday. So I'm going to do those. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to trigger my sleight of hand. Move one die on my character sheet to any empty space. And currently that's... 6, 10, 12, more like 11. So I'm going to move the black 4 here. Oh no, I can't do that. Don't do that. No. Don't do that to myself. Maybe I don't want to do that. Should do that. Oh. Because I need this switch option. order. Yep. Okay. I'm going to do this. Take the coin. Take this. I'm going to place it. Switching these two. Six, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, seventeen. So that should trigger that row for better or for worse. Let me see, is there any I want to... What number is my not? So I'm at the top one, I'm good. Dex is currently at... Oh. That was a six. What was it rolled? Okay, that's it. 10, 12, 17, 16, that scores. 12, 16, 17 would score. 1, 2, 10, 11. Thirteen, okay. Sixteen or seventeen, it's f ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen scores. That's gonna score. Probably just buy the the skill just for the point. Oh wait, do I have all seven possible colors? I have blue, black, green, white, gold, red, and purple. I didn't do my last switch. That's gonna move me up. Lose me points. So I don't want that trait. Yeah, so I'm gonna end up. Well, first I gotta roll the enemy die. Rolls a five. Took from the two. Uh, I take the mega card, okay. And with that, I'm gonna buy the last skill. And now I can go to scoring. Let's discard. And I missed out on what I was one of the things I was trying to do. So now we can go to scoring. We can move the market out of the way. Shift this to the middle. To score it. So I had four coins, so that's not enough for another point in this. But I do have two weapons. Four skills. Two of the mystic set and two traits. Let's show how scoring works, and I'll do it right here in the middle. So first for scoring, we're going to start with our alignment, which I'm at the three-star three space still, so I get three points straight up for that. And then I'm going to go to my class, or, yeah, class. Um, and then... Is my strength a 17? Well, because of my weapons, when scoring attribute goals plus one 
value to all dice of my class color, white. And the jewel dagger is scoring attribute goals plus one to all gold. I did finish a row, so I should have had one more coin. Wouldn't matter though. So we're going to go 6, 12, 18, minus 1 is 17, so that's 3 stars. 1, 2, 3. Next up is dexterity. 6 is actually 7, 4 is actually 5 because of the gold and white. We're both plus 1 each, so that's 7 plus 5, 12, plus 5 is 17, minus 1 is 16 total, and it need to be 15 or 16, so that's 2 stars. Next up, con, uh, we have 6 plus 4 is 10, plus 7 is 17, because gold is plus 1, 17 is 3 stars, 1, 2, 3. Next up, we have intelligence, 2 becomes 3, total of 11, need to be 14 plus, no points on that one. Then for Wisdom, 4 becomes 5, 6 becomes 7, that's 12, plus 2 is 14, plus 2 is 16. 16 or 17 gets me 2 stars, so that's 2 stars right there. Charisma needs to be 14 or more. I have 6 plus 7, because it's white, is 13, plus 2 is 15, gets me a point as well. Next up, colored dice in this, in these... Uh, placement. If I had won that match, just, or if I have two to three that match, you'd give me one point. Four to five that match is three points. If I had matched all six, it'd be six points, which I did not get my last one. I was considering getting my purple switched up there. <coughs> so, what happened was we have no purple there. We do have a white, green, red, blue, and black. So that is five, so I get three points. for that. And now we move on to, so we did the attributes, we did our class, we, and now the color die. So for every die that matches your class color, which in this case we're playing white, you get a point. So I have three. And then the backstory card we just did, armor cards, we have two of the mystic robes when you have two of them you have three points for the set. So, one, two, three. And then, so that's those. Now traits. First off right here, we have dedicated. Gain two stars if you have at least one weapon, one skill, two traits, and one armor. So that's gonna be worth two points for me. And then my cunning trait gains one point for each skill card I had, which I had four total. One, two, three, four. And that is all of the scoring for a total of 29 points. So, for a solo game, there are different levels on how well you do based on the score you get. You get a certain title. For 26 to 29 points, I am an adventurer. The lowest level is an NPC at 21 points or less. A hurling from 22 to 25. A luminary, if you were from 30 to 33. A clan leader, 34 to 37. If you got 38 or more, you're a true hero. So tonight, I'm not a true hero, but that is okay. I still enjoy playing. It's been a while since I pulled this game out. I should be pulling it out more often, just during a pandemic. A lot of solo plays and playing online. Some of these games don't have the table as much as I would like them to. But I did enjoy having fun playing as a penguin, paladin, and a cartographer. And like I said, this cartographer card is a promo card found in the cartographer's game, which I will be playing on Wednesday night with Jess of Chicks Can Game. We'll be playing, I believe, at 6 p.m. Eastern on her channel, which is just underscore CCG. But yeah, Thunderworks Games makes some amazing games. The artwork, the play style, the mechanics, all just seem to mesh so well together. Yeah, role player is definitely fun, even solo. Just from the artwork to the to the thanky brain burn that you get from how how you want to 
figure out your dice at the end right there is definitely something I really enjoy in the game. It's, it's not just, oh, I placed it there, I don't have a choice. It's, oh, I planned ahead, and I know I can't do everything I want to do, so it's figuring out the maximization of what I want to do with what I can do. <laughs> but yeah, I definitely love the artwork, the components that they provide, and all the, the variety, just because like, there's so many different classes, so many different backstories and alignment cards that you can mix and match together. It makes every game definitely feel differently. Typically, of course, it talks about doing it, kind of setting up randomly in a game, like pulling a random die to figure out your, your color for, for your class, and then kind of getting random alignments and stuff. For the fun of it, I handpick them for tonight because who wouldn't want to handpick custom stuff like the penguin? But yeah, so James, thank you for being here tonight. I really do appreciate it, hanging out and chat, talking with me. It's nice to have someone here. I would have enjoyed playing the game regardless, but it, it's, of course, always more fun when someone else joins along. So with that, I'm going to call it a night. I'm going to see if anyone else is streaming, and we can, even if it's only a couple of us, we can raid someone. If, if you know who's online right now, let me know who we should raid. Uh, who is on right now? Is there anyone you would like me to raid, James? I'm trying to see who's on real quick. Eclectic Camel. Okay. I'm not sure if I'm following them yet, but I'd be more than happy to raid over into them. So let's see what we got going on. See what he's doing. So he's doing a stream anniversary. Sure, let's let me make sure I can do this right. Right, it's been a while. So I believe it is the exclamation. Nope. Backslash read. There we go. And at eclectic camel. So we're going to raid over there. Um, I appreciate you showing up tonight. So as always, play games and spread joy.